While most people are aware of the frequent devastating earthquakes in California and Alaska, there's a less known but potentially more dangerous seismic region running through the central United States, the New Madrid Seismic Zone. Experts believe this area is the most seismically active in the country, even though it remains poorly understood. Scientists are now worried that the New Madrid Fault might soon trigger a significant seismic event, leading to landslides, tsunamis, and loss of life across parts of Missouri, Arkansas, and Tennessee. Today let's discover why these regions are at risk for a series of catastrophic earthquakes in the near future and what might happen when they strike. Join us as we explore the looming threat of the New Madrid Fault and its potential impact on the United States. Don't forget to click on that subscribe button and like this video as it's the best way to support this channel. Often overshadowed by its more renowned counterparts in California, the Pacific Northwest, and Alaska, the New Madrid Seismic Zone stands as one of the most perilous seismic regions in the United States. Spanning across several states, including Missouri, Arkansas, Tennessee, and Kentucky, this seismic zone has the potential to disrupt the lives of millions of Americans. The origins of the New Madrid Seismic Zone trace back approximately 750 million years ago to the Precambrian era, during the fragmentation of the supercontinent Rodinia. This event triggered the formation of a rift valley, which over millions of years, failed to fully separate the continent. It is this unresolved rift that created a vulnerable zone within the Earth's crust, setting the groundwork for future seismic events. Today, this ancient rift lies buried deep beneath layers of sediment from the Mississippi River, explaining the region's unexpected hilly terrain amidst an otherwise flat landscape. The Mississippi River, the lifeblood of this region, traverses through the heart of the New Madrid Seismic Zone, forming a broad alluvial plain that serves as a vital channel for commerce, agriculture, and transportation. This river's floodplain, characterized by nutrient-rich soils, has historically fostered extensive agricultural development. Alongside the river, the terrain gradually rises into the Ozark Plateau to the west and the Appalachian Mountains to the east, offering a stark contrast to the flat floodplains. These uplands, with their rugged hills and forests, present a different facet of the region's physical geography, highlighting the diversity of habitats and ecosystems within the area. Seismic activity in the New Madrid Seismic Zone is characterized by intraplate earthquakes, occurring within the interior of a tectonic plate rather than along its boundaries, where such events are more typical. This oddity adds a layer of mystery, as these earthquakes happen far from the edges of the North American plate. Unlike regions defined by a single fault line, the New Madrid Seismic Zone is characterized by a network of faults crisscrossing the area. These faults lie concealed beneath the Earth's surface, posing challenges to their comprehensive study and understanding. This complexity is why many have never predicted a major earthquake striking this region, despite its history of inflicting significant damage. Today, the New Madrid Seismic Zone continues to be a significant concern for geologists and emergency planners alike. While it hasn't sparked any major issues recently, history has demonstrated just how devastating it can be. In the early 19th century, European settlers were moving westward into the Mississippi River Valley, attracted by the fertile land and opportunities for trade and agriculture. At this time, the region was sparsely populated, with Native American tribes living alongside the European settlers, and earthquakes were not generally considered a significant threat in this part of the country. But the first major earthquake struck the region on December 16, 1811, at around 2 a.m. The epicenter is believed to have been near the town of New Madrid. The earthquake is estimated to have had a magnitude of 7.5 to 7.7. The shaking was intense, causing buildings to collapse, trees to be uprooted, and the ground to crack open in places. The earthquake was felt over an incredibly wide area, with reports of shaking as far away as New York City, Boston, and even Canada. This was only the beginning. A second major earthquake struck on January 23, 1812, 
with a similar magnitude. The epicenter of this quake was further to the north, near what is now New Madrid, Missouri. Like the first, this earthquake caused widespread damage and was felt across a vast area of the United States. The third and most powerful earthquake occurred on February 7, 1812. This quake, with an estimated magnitude of 7.7 .7 to 8.1, had its epicenter near New Madrid but caused devastation across the entire region. The shaking was so intense that it caused the Mississippi River to flow backward for several hours, creating what is now known as Realfoot Lake in Tennessee. Large sections of land sank or were uplifted, altering the course of rivers and creating new lakes and swamps. The earthquake generated violent ground motions and was felt across much of the eastern United States, with reports of church bells ringing in Boston and buildings swaying in Washington, D.C., and aftershocks are reported to have continued for years. This series of earthquakes occurred at a time when the region was sparsely populated, which minimized the loss of life. However, if a similar series of earthquakes were to occur today, the consequences would be far more devastating due to the increased population density, urbanization, and the presence of critical infrastructure such as bridges, dams, pipelines, and power plants. The U.S. Geological Survey estimates that there is a 7-10% to 10 chance of a major earthquake of magnitude 7.5 or greater occurring in the New Madrid Seismic Zone within the next 50 years. There is a 25-40% to 40 chance of a magnitude 6.0 or greater earthquake during the same period. Meanwhile, some estimates suggest that major earthquakes, like those that occurred in 1811 to 1812, may have a recurrence interval of roughly 500 to 1,000 years. However, the recurrence of moderate-sized earthquakes of magnitude 6.0 to 7.0 may be more frequent, potentially on the order of every 200 to 300 years. Given that the last major series occurred over 200 years ago, this interval suggests that the region may be approaching a period of increased seismic activity. These estimates represent significant probabilities, particularly when considering the potential devastation that a large earthquake could cause. The region's burgeoning population density and evolving built environment since the early 1800s have significantly heightened concerns for earthquake preparedness and resilience. Unlike the West Coast, where buildings and infrastructure are often engineered with seismic activity in mind, Many structures in the central United States lack the strength to withstand the forces unleashed by a major quake. As a result, one of the most immediate and visible impacts of a significant seismic event in this region would be the extensive damage inflicted upon buildings and infrastructure. Critical infrastructure such as bridges, roads, pipelines, and power lines could also face severe disruption. This could result in significant interruptions to transportation and communication networks, with Interstate 55, vital for connecting New Orleans to Chicago, likely rendered impassable for an extended period. Moreover, the Mississippi River itself, a key artery for travel and trade, would probably become unusable. Historical evidence from the early 1800s suggests that the river could even reverse its flow temporarily, a phenomenon that could recur in a future earthquake. Even if such a reversal doesn't occur, debris would likely clog the river, hindering emergency response efforts and affecting supply chains, leading to shortages of food, water, and medical supplies. The Mississippi River carries over 500 million tons of imports, exports, and domestic freight each year. All of this vital commerce would come to a standstill on the nation's most crucial river if the earthquake occurs. In 1991, a Federal Emergency Management Agency report projected that damages from a 7.6 magnitude earthquake would be catastrophic. It estimated that approximately 2% of the population would be killed, up to 10% seriously injured with around 10% of all buildings collapsing and 30% suffering severe structural damage within the nearest counties to the epicenter. The damage would amount to nearly $300 billion. 
These sobering statistics underscore the potential human and economic toll of a major earthquake in the New Madrid Seismic Zone. Presently, the New Madrid Seismic Zone is populated by just over 2.1 million people. However, this population count does not encompass areas outside the region that would still bear the impact, such as St. Louis, Missouri, Nashville, Tennessee, and Evansville, Indiana. This indicates that a considerably larger population could feel the repercussions of a seismic event than just those within the New Madrid Seismic Zone. Now it might be clear to you that the New Madrid Seismic Zone is a ticking time bomb, with the potential to cause one of the most catastrophic natural disasters in U.S. history. The lessons of the 1811 to 1812 earthquakes serve as a stark reminder of the destructive power of the New Madrid Seismic Zone and the need for preparedness and mitigation efforts. While the exact timing and magnitude of the next major earthquake are uncertain, the risks are real and the consequences could be devastating.